Hey, Tina, there's something I need to talk to you about. What's up, babe? I'm getting ready to head out on another one of those long business trips. Again? When are you leaving? This weekend. You mean tomorrow? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I was only notified about this trip yesterday. There are so many things I forgot to tell you. I understand. But how long will you be gone? Just about a week. I'll be back next Saturday. All right. But doesn't it seem a bit odd? Odd? How so? You've been on quite a few of these long business trips lately. Plus, didn't you just get back home from one not too long ago? It's only been five days. And you're off on another trip already. I know. It feels like they're keeping me on the go all the time. But you know how it is in the business world, right? Besides, the company asks me to go. I can't really say no. I can't help but think. They're pushing you too hard. The company must pay you a lot more money, right? You know, it's not like they're paying me extra or anything. They cover my meals and accommodation, but I'm the one who chooses to go on these trips. But earlier, you said you were forced to go on this one. Well, yeah, but when the boss personally requests you, how can you say no? Technically, it's still a voluntary choice to take on the extra workload without extra pay. It just doesn't seem fair. It's like they're making things difficult for you. Look at it this way. It's all about gaining experience and earning the boss's trust. If I consistently leave a good impression, it might lead to a promotion and a higher salary. I don't know. It still doesn't sit right with me. No need to worry. All right then. Will you at least come home for dinner tonight? I won't be able to make it home. There's a ton of work to wrap up at the office and I need to get everything squared away for the early morning airport run tomorrow. What about packing clothes and stuff? You'll have to swing by the house to pick them up, won't you? No need. I've already got everything packed and ready. Wow, that's a surprise. My husband's actually packing for a business trip himself. What? You didn't think I could handle it? It's not that. It's just that you've never done it before. So I'm pleasantly surprised. Don't underestimate me like that. I've got to get back to work. All right then. I'll see you next week. Safe travels. Marlin, why did I just receive a photo of my mother and you in the same bed? What the hell is going on? Listen, sweetheart. I mean, Tina. Our relationship was great in the beginning. I cannot lie, but... But what, Marlin? Are you going to tell me? Is that because I don't fulfill my role as a wife? Or how my mother is better than me? No. That is not the matter. Why is my mother, Marlin, of all people? Tina, please don't take it personal. Don't take it personal, you pretentious bastard. The thing is, when your mother first talked to me, I felt something. And I wish I could say I'm sorry to you, but I'm simply not. Is she the reason why you don't take me on dates anymore? Is she the reason you never touch me anymore? Or rarely look me in my eyes? That's not it, Tina. I... All those business trips you took were for my mother, weren't they? Were you ever actually going? Or were those all lies to? No, most of the trips were real. I would skip some of them in order to meet with her. What? You hardly made any time for me. But you were willing to skip work to go see my mother. You made me feel like a princess. Like I was the only girl you loved. And then you hit me with a big slap. I don't know what to say. When did it all start anyway? How long have I been living a lie? A year after our marriage. When we came over during Christmas. At the time, we got in an argument and your mother comforted me. She assured me of so much and told me how you've been like this since you were a kid. Always fussing and complaining. Then, you know, one thing led to another and we ended up kissing for a bit. It happened while everyone else was eating. That night, I was looking for you so we could communicate on what happened. 
you started getting a little too tipsy. And then, I saw you trying to down a whole bottle of wine. You were making a huge scene. So I had to drag you away and explain to you why you couldn't have any more. I even sobered you up by taking care of you like you were a big baby. After you stormed off, I spent so much of my night searching for you to make sure you were okay. And it turns out you were sucking face with my mother the whole damn time. You wouldn't know what a good wife was unless it hit you in the face. I seriously have no clue what I ever saw in you. It's no hard feelings, Tina. I had a long conversation about you with your mother and I realized I could do better. I could be better if I was with your mother instead. That's all there is to it. I love your mother. What? She completely brainwashed you. It is so, so sad to see all those nights we spent together on dates, decorating our house, thinking of having a baby, and you threw it all away like it meant nothing to you. When did you start losing feelings for me, Marlin? Was it that night or much before then? Listen, Tina, I'm not sure of all that. Trust me when I say, I didn't expect this to happen either. It's not like I knew my feelings would change so drastically in one night. But since it did, I want to file for divorce to marry your mother instead. Is this some kind of joke? Unbelievable! You are marrying my husband? Yes, I have the engagement ring right here. How dare you send me the photo of the engagement ring? Have you lost your mind? You're doing this to your own daughter for crying out loud. I always told you growing up that you didn't have the assets to please a man, not the attitude or the manners. This is so rich coming from you since you could barely keep dad around. Don't even go there. I just don't understand why. Why would you do this to me? It's all because of Dad, isn't it? Stop right there! You have envied me ever since I was born. The only reason Dad ever stayed with you was because of me. He gave me so much attention. And you started despising me over it. He wanted to leave you so bad. But the only reason he stayed was not for you, but for me. You talk about women's assets, but you could barely keep your ex-husband happy. Is that why you decided to take mine? To get back at me? Watch your mouth, young lady. Where do you get off speaking this trash to your mother? I gave birth to you, remember? I clothed you, fed you, helped you give a roof over your head. And here you are, bitching and complaining. You owe everything to me, including your husband. Oh my god! I can't believe you bring that here. Clothing me and feeding me, providing me with shelter, is the bare minimum. I don't owe you anything. It's not like I begged and pleaded you to bring me into this world. And if I could, I would gladly take a different mother than you. How could you? Why would you post the same picture you sent to me online for the whole world to see? Your caption under the post is Fulfilling all the things you couldn't. They do say mothers do it best. Not only are you embarrassing me online, you decided it was appropriate to show a shady insult at me. I don't see the problem. I am engaged to this man, Tina. Why wouldn't I post us together? As for the caption, did I lie? This is so repulsive. I want to throw up. This can't be real. Get a grip, sure. All your friends and family will see it. But it's not like it's going to kill you. It just shows I can take whoever I want and whatever I want. You always try to make me the bad guy. All I am doing is being there for my fiancé. Do all the things you couldn't do and all the things you could do, but better. You should be thanking me. Thanking you? You obviously lost it now. I can't help but laugh. 
You good for nothing, husband stealer. Like I said before, watch your tone, young lady. Stop texting your mother all these rude things. It's getting ridiculous. Jealousy won't get you anywhere. She posted that picture of you guys in her bed with a ridiculous caption. How can you possibly be on my mother's side? Oh my gosh, Tina. This was one of my problems with you. You are talking about me having problems. The hypocrisy is unreal. You are always complaining and playing the victim. Your mother is a wonderful woman. She is the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with and to cherish moments with. If you truly ever loved me, then why won't you just be happy for me? We can still support each other in a distant, friendly way. You can even be invited to our wedding if your mother allows it. Invited to my ex-husband and egg donor's wedding is nothing short of insanity. I truly can't help but laugh. This is all so frustrating, but relieving at the same time. I said countless times how my mother did nothing but made me feel terrible about so many things. Everything I did was wrong in her eyes ever since I was young. I even told you all my insecurities. I've explained to you the sadness I had since I never had a normal connection with her. Things with her were starting to look up ever since you've recommended we seek therapy together. And I did it. Because I wanted you to meet your mother-in-law when it was time. I actually wanted her to attend our wedding. To see me walk down the aisle, despite how mean and spiteful she was to me. I don't understand why. Why are you leaving me for her? Tina. I don't have time to question you anyway. I wasted more than enough time on people as impertinent as you guys. You won't have to file for divorce. I will do it. You are going to divorce me? Yeah. I am more than glad this was brought to light. You are a scumbag lying cheater who only cares about himself and apparently my mother. This is really relieving to know. It's like a burden off my shoulder. I don't want to spend the rest of my life with an asshole like you. It's better to get rid of trash sooner rather than later, I guess. You already sound like you're trying to convince yourself and cope. You gain nothing out of this divorce, but gain a beautiful woman by my side. Someone who really understands me. Your father made a huge mistake letting her go. Don't talk about my father like that. You know nothing about him. And why shouldn't I? My father is a respectable man who always puts his family first. Most importantly, he endured my mother's rude and offensive behavior for the entire 10 years they were married. Marlin, you don't measure up as a man. You're more like a boy trying to play in the big field when you really belong on the playground. This is also one of the many reasons I will be divorcing you. You play victim, complain, and cannot handle rejection. That is exactly what you're doing. I guess when you spend so much time with that mother of mine, you start to project like she does. I really wonder, Marlin. What will your mother and little sister think of this? They seem to actually enjoy my company. So, what do you plan to tell them exactly? Tina and I are separating so I can be with her mother instead. Is that about right? I will talk to them about it when it's time. After all, they will have to attend me and your mother's wedding. This is so embarrassing! Not only for me, but for you too! To think something like this actually happens. But what's done is done. You actually decided to cheat on me with the woman who gave birth to me. Whatever. I will file for divorce immediately. And I want you out of my house. You can expect to find your clothes, electronics, and all your other belongings on the front lawn. Through sickness and in health, till death do us part? What a joke! I will be the one divorcing you. Tina, don't you dare file divorce. I will come to the house soon. Don't touch any of my stuff. Don't make me take you to court. It sounds like you forgot how good of a lawyer I have. 
You even met him when we were getting ready for the marriage papers. With him? The divorce should run smoothly, and I can have you out of my hair in no time. I refuse to listen to this. Tina, pick up the phone. I'm on my way. Tina, answer my damn call. Why is all my stuff on the lawn and I can't even open the door? Worst of all, you have a damn banner on the house saying cheater free. Are you serious? Everyone is looking at me from their porch. This is so childish. And so what? Like I said earlier, you were still a boy on the playground. You had no business messing with a real woman like me from the start. You and her are a perfect match. I'm so glad you found each other. You guys couldn't even find each other without me. I'm calling your mother about this. You can't do anything to me? So you're going to tattle on me to mom? Aww, what a crybaby. LOL. You are calling her as if she's gonna help you? There's nothing your precious fiancé can do for you now. Tina, please. I can hear people whispering about me and recording me. I am breaking down and crying outside. I'm sorry. Please. I will do anything. We can be back together if you want to. We can live happily again. I will do everything in my power to make it up to you, sweetheart. Just open the door and we can be back together. Just answer my phone. In the door. Please. Tina, baby. Tina Carter. Tina Johnson. Your last name is irrelevant to me. I don't want or need you. Your number is now getting blocked. Also, to prevent you from harassing me like this in the future, I will be placing a no-contact contract on you and Sydney. Have a good life and a blessed day. Tina Christina Johnson, answer my call. Oh, wow. Using my maiden name. It has a much better ring to it anyway. Why the actual hell are people towing my car? Your car? Actually, you remember when I had that car under my name? It was never taken off. So yeah, don't expect to be able to drive that car around anymore. You are childish beyond compare. You pin me out to be so bad, but you have been competing with me since you gave birth to me. So we really don't compare in any aspect. Tell your fiancé to stop shaking my damn door. I changed the locks to every room. You brat! But it's fine. He can just move in with me. As if he could really last living with you. I was hardly able to do it. And I stayed only for 16 years. To think my own mother would betray me like this and steal my husband from me? We were going to therapy. I thought things were getting better slowly but surely. I allowed you to attend my wedding to help us plan some details. I really thought we were getting somewhere. I thought we were getting nowhere. The therapy sessions was nothing but you rambling about things I did and then me being forced to explain why I did it. You thought you were getting nowhere because you actually had to admit your wrongdoings. You are nothing less than ungrateful, Tina. I really don't need this slander. I've had enough drama for today. This pointless arguing and back and forth is too much. I've already decided what I was going to do when I first saw the picture you sent of my ex-husband and you in the same bed. I'm disowning you. You and I no longer have any ties to one another. Don't play with me, Tina. You are disowning me? Yeah, pretty much. I'm so sick and tired of you and your behavior. No one could have prepared me for the information I received today. And I will admit, I am heartbroken. I would never think you would reach this low. I couldn't even imagine it. I guess I should have known. Ever since I saw how stubborn you were to change. So yeah, I'm disowning you. I don't need you in my life. Not even as a stranger. 
Well, I've disowned you long ago, so I couldn't give a damn of what you have to say. If anything, I am more grateful than anything to be disconnected from you and connected to your husband. Or should I say, my husband? You should be receiving a call from your mom in a second. How could you call my mother about this? Are you serious? Grandma allowed you to live in her old house free of charge. Well, not anymore, I guess. She just kicked me out, you absolute bastard. Where am I supposed to stay now? Don't ask me that. Neither you nor fiancé has a home. Not only that, since he has been skipping his business trips, he hasn't been making much money. I truly hope to see you get out of this. I swear, as soon as I see you again, you're done. Here's a screenshot of your fiancé begging to take me back, just to enter the house. Do you see how easy and quick he is to leave you? This will be my last message to you. You two won't last a year together. You both lost spouses that were irreplaceable and only have yourselves to blame. Without you two, I know I will find happiness in my life, even though it hurts. I have to thank you both for doing what you did. I'm happy to get you both out of my life sooner rather than later. Goodbye. Get back here, Tina. You're an ungrateful thing. Marlon and Sydney have yet to marry each other due to the overwhelming stress Tina has put on them. Marcus's mother and little sister both disapprove of him and Sydney's marriage. Tina has finished filing for divorce and Marlon is officially kicked out of their house. Tina also disowns her mother, to which she has blocked her on everything and placed a no-contact contract in both her and Marlon. Now, Tina lives happily alone and speaks to her other family members and occasionally checks in Marlon's mother and sister. This was Tina's happily ever after.